Hi, it's Dr. Ogden. Today we're going to be looking at cellular division, mitosis, and meiosis. So we've talked about the word genome before. The genome is the entire set of genetic instructions. And in humans, we actually have two genomes. We have the genome which is found inside of the nucleus, and this is represented here by this karyotype picture, which is a picture of all the chromosomes. So these are actual chromosomes here. And um, you can actually see the chromosomes when they are condensed right before cell division. Here's an example of this in this cell down here. We also have, though, the mitochondrial genome that we've talked about before. Um, it's much smaller, of course, than this genome. And notice this genome is made up of 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 are called autosomes, and they are the same size and have the same um, sequence of genes on each pair on each complementary pair, whereas the sex chromosomes, or the 23rd pair, though in this case a Y and an X, because this is a male, if it was a female it would be X and X, they are, if you have a Y and an X then, and you are a male, then it's different. The Y is about a third the size of the X, and they don't contain the same sequence of genes. They contain different genes on them. The mitochondrial genome, by the way, is circular and looks um, is about the size of a bacterial genome. Now, the reason we can actually see the genes, the chromosomes, I'm sorry, um, condensed like this is right prior to cellular division, DNA, which is regularly quite, uh, is, is wound up and, and supercoiled, um, only is unraveled whenever a gene is being read or copied. But right before cell division, it becomes supercoiled and then it becomes condensed back on itself and the chromosomes actually become visible. So it's important to look then at the cell cycle. And in each cell, if we look at a very simple case here of just one chromosome, okay? Again, in humans we have 23 pairs, but for, for right now we're just gonna look at one chromosome. So if you go through uh, the cycle, the cell cycle, and look at the chromosome, you see that the cell cycle has two main parts. The interphase, where the cell is 90% of the time, and the mitotic phase, where the cell is 10% of the time. And in the interphase, it's divided into three different phases. The G1, the S phase, and S, S in this case stands for synthesis. This is where DNA is actually duplicated. So this is where we go from one chromosome to two sister chromatids. So double the amount of DNA, not double the amount of chromosomes. So this is one chromosome, this is still just one chromosome. It does not become two chromosomes until those sister chromatids separate. So all through G2, this is another growth phase here, and then finally we get to the mitotic phase, and we'll look at the details of this in just a moment. During mitosis then, things happen until eventually the cells separate, and now the chromosomes have separated, and now you have two, set, two new cells that were created from one original cell, and that is the cell cycle. If you look at the details of this, then here, again, here's interphase where the DNA is not condensed, and the cell is basically doing what it needs to do. Then it goes into the S phase, it duplicates all of the DNA, and then it goes into the G2 phase and continues to grow and pre to prepare for its cellular division phase. Um, and this begins with the mitotic phase, and the first stage of mitosis is called prophase. In prophase, the chromosomes are condensed down, the centrosomes begin to arrange themselves, and the mitotic spindle be begins to form. The um, nuclear membrane also begins to break apart. And going into the late stages of prophase, the mitotic spindles now grab onto each of the um, homologous chromosomes here. So here's this duplicated one chromosome. Here's the other duplicated one chromosome, right? So you see these chromosomes are now being starting to get pulled and tugged back and forth by the, by the microtubules of the mitotic spindle. Metaphase is marked by the fact that all of the chromosomes are now lined up along the, the midline here. So here you can see the two homologous pairs here, but they're both along the midline. Here's another one, and here's the other one, and they're along the midline. And at this moment, then, a signal is given throughout, throughout this cell, and the sister chromatids separate and become daughter chromosomes. 
and the mitotic spindle pulls those to each side of the cell and then a cleavage furrow begins to develop and the nucleus starts to form again and you start to get the envelope and the mitotic spindle breaks down and then you go into cytokinesis where eventually this entire cell gets divided just like I remember when my grandma used to make cinnamon rolls and she would use a piece of thread she would put it underneath the roll uh, put it on the top cross it and then just pull and it would and it would pull that cinnamon roll apart and that's essentially what's happening with this constricting ring of microfilaments and then you end up with two daughter cells each with a complete set identical to the parent set of chromosomes in plants cytokinesis is slightly different because you do not have the ability to do this constriction and separate the cells because of the cell wall rather you start to form a cell plate right along the middle and eventually that cell plate fuses all the way around and you have now two new daughter cells. And that's the process of mitosis in a nutshell.